What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, D-Rip. Hey, today we got another special video. Today we're going to be reacting to top 20 shortest WWE Championship reigns ever. First time I'm across the channel, make sure I'm going to hit that thumbs up. Make sure I subscribe because we're almost at 5K. And uh, the goal this year is 10K, you know? We're at 5K. We've been going crazy. We've been jumping. Now let's continue doing that, all right? If you got any videos you want me to react to in particular, let me know down below in the comments. Because y'all know I read the comments and I respond to everybody that comments. So let me know what y'all think about this video. Let me know. But you want me to write two minutes. These are the top 20 shortest WWE Championship reigns of all time. To make this interesting, we are including the Hardcore Championship or the 24-7 title. Bro, no, 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 no. If we're going to do that, 24-7 Championship is obviously going to be the fastest title reign ever. And it's going to happen at least three times in this video. So they should not put the, that in here. They definitely shouldn't have put that in here. Because we've seen people get pinned and then... As soon as they win, they celebrate, and then they get pinned. So it's 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 not something that should be in here. Yeah. Number 20, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. In 2021, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez won the first female Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. This earned them a match against the women's tag team champions, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. However, a controversial ending saw Baszler and Jax retain their titles. The next week, NXT General Manager William Regal decided to right the wrong by but then William Regal come back to WWE? Where is he right now? Because I remember he came back to WWE, but, it, but what is he doing right now? Awarding Kai and Gonzalez the new NXT Women's Tag Team Championship. That same night, Dakota and Raquel had their first title defense against Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon. I'm guessing you can figure out where this is going. Blackheart and Moon won, giving Dakota and Raquel a championship reign of only 41 minutes and 51 seconds. Wow. Number 19, Randy Orton. Six Randy days before the 2007 No Mercy pay-per-view, the WWE Champion, John Cena, got injured and was forced to vacate the belt. At No Mercy, Vince McMahon kicked off the show and personally announced that Cena's no Mercy opponent, Randy Orton, was the new WWE Champion. However, Orton had to immediately defend his title against Triple H. It wasn't a pedigree or an RKO that finished the match. Instead, the game rolled out the Legend Killer and took the gold. This meant that Randy Orton's title remember reign this. only lasted 24 minutes and 3 seconds. Number 18, I don't Dolph remember Ziggler. That. You might be surprised to hear that the show-off is on this list. Ziggler did cash in his Money in the Bank contract in 2013 to become World Heavyweight Champion. That title reign only lasted a nice 69 days. However, that was actually Dolph Ziggler's second world championship reign. In 2011, Dolph Why is that? Is this an order? Or is this just random things? Because if it's an order, the two that just came before this, before the Dolph Ziggler one, were shorter. So, I, I don't think it's an order, because there's no way. He just said 69 days. Dolph had been feuding with the World Heavyweight Champion, Edge. Ziggler was also aligned with Vicky Guerrero, who used her powers as acting general manager to fire Edge. This caused the World Heavyweight Championship to be vacated, so Vicky awarded the title to Dolph. Right after that, the real general manager of SmackDown, Teddy Long, returned, rehired Edge, and immediately set up a match between Ziggler and the Radar Superstar. Edge beat the show off and won back the World Championship. This caused Dolph Ziggler's title reign to last only 16 minutes and 42 seconds. Number 17, Chris Jericho. And the I'm chosen one now. vengeance. I'm completely confused now, because what what was he just talking about about the 69 days? Like I'm I'm lost. I'm literally lost. In three seconds. Number 18, Dolph Ziggler. You might be surprised to hear that the show off is on this list. Ziggler did cash in his Money in the Bank contract in 2013 to become World Heavyweight Champion. That title reign only lasted a nice 69 days. Oh, How that was a different reign. Okay, so that was a different reign. Okay, got it. Number 17, Chris Jericho. At the 2001 Vengeance pay-per-view, Chris Jericho did the impossible. First, he defeated The Rock to win the World Championship. However, Y2J barely had a moment to catch his breath, as he then had to fight the WWE Champion, Stone Cold Steve Austin. The winner of the match would become the undisputed WWE Champion, so there was a lot on the line. Pure chaos followed as multiple people interfered, causing the momentum of the match to change in an instant. However, Chris Jericho ultimately got the better of Austin and became the undisputed WWE Champion. In in doing this, the World Championship became defunct, meaning that Jericho was only World Champ for 14 minutes and 21 seconds. So Number 16, lose. Dean Douglas. At the fourth In Your House pay-per-view, fans were supposed to see the Intercontinental Champion defend his title against Dean Douglas. However, due to an injury, Shawn Michaels was unable to compete and had to forfeit the title. This meant that Dean Douglas automatically became the new Intercontinental Champion. However, Douglas didn't have the night off, as Razor Ramon became the new challenger. The two had a competitive fight that ended in 
controversy when the champ got his foot under the rope, but the referee didn't see it. Regardless, the Dean's IC title reign came to an end in only 13 minutes and 54 seconds. Number 15. That is wild. His foot was under the rope. I hate matches that end like that. Where the foot's under the rope, or their foot's on the rope, the ref doesn't see it and they still count to three. I, I hate those endings. The Miz and John Cena. Yeah, The Miz and John Cena were not only a tag team, but they were also champions. In 2011, in the build up to the WrestleMania 27 match, The Miz and John Cena were forced to compete in a match against the tag team champions, Keith Slater and Justin Gabriel of the core. Despite having Wade Barrett- We need a new, new title Jackson design. Their corner, Keith and Gabriel and Justin Gabriel- Bro, we need a new title design. The titles right now still look like this. Only difference is the color. It's the same title, different color of the core. Despite having Wade Barrett and Ezekiel Jackson in their corner, Heath and Gabriel lost and Cena and The Miz were the new tag team champions. As soon as the match was over, Wade used the group's rematch clause. Even still, it looked like Cena and Miz were going to retain, but an attack by the A-lister caused Cena to lose the match and the titles. In total, John Cena and The Miz were tag team champions for 10 minutes and 12 seconds. Number 14, Chris Jericho again. In 2003, Monday Night Raw had two general managers, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Eric Bischoff. This led to an interesting moment. On one episode, Chris Jericho was fighting the Intercontinental Champion, Rob Van Dam. Thanks to help from Bischoff, Jericho won the match and the IC title. Stone Cold wasn't having any of it and quickly set up a steel cage rematch. With no one to interfere, RVD won and regained the Intercontinental Championship. This meant Y2J's IC title reign clocked in at just 7 minutes and 51 seconds. Number 13. So the cage was just sitting at the top of the arena. Nobody knew what it was there for. And the IC title. Stone Cold wasn't having any of it and quickly set up a steel cage remake. So there's a giant cage at the top. Nobody knows what it's up there for because it wasn't announced. And you're just looking all night like, hmm, I wonder what match this cage is going to be involved in. I wonder who's going to be in this cage because it's up here, but we don't know anything about it. We've been watching wrestling every day. We've been watching wrestling every week. And there's a cage here randomly. Then this happens. Oh, that's what the cage is for. For a seven minute match. match. With no one to interfere, RVD won and regained the Intercontinental Championship. This meant Y2J's IC title reign clocked in at just seven minutes and 51 seconds. Number 13, Daniel Bryan. In 2013, Daniel Bryan's popularity began to grow and grow. It finally got so big that he was given a WWE Championship match against John Cena in the main event of SummerSlam. Despite all the odds, the American Dragon rose to the occasion, beat Cena, and won the WWE title. Unfortunately, Triple H, who was the special guest referee had other ideas and attacked Daniel mm. after the victory. This Randy. gave Randy Orton the perfect opportunity to cash in his Money in the Bank contract and easily take the championship. Because of this, Daniel Bryan was only world champion for 5 minutes and 25 seconds. That's crazy. Number 12, Roman Reigns. After failing to win the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 31, Roman Reigns had to scratch and claw to get another opportunity. After Seth Rollins was unexpectedly injured, a tournament was set up to crown a new WWE Champion. Reigns made it to the final round, where he's forced to fight his friend, Dean Ambrose. The mm. former Shield mates didn't hold anything back, and in the end, the big dog came out on top. Ironically, like with Daniel Bryan, Triple H decided to ruin the moment. A distraction by the game allowed Sheamus to attack and then cash in the Money in the Bank contract. I that. The Celtic Warrior won the match with ease, and Reigns was left lying on the ground with a WWE Championship reign that lasted 5 minutes and 15 seconds. And now he has one of the longest reigns ever. Who's going to beat Roman, y'all? We know The Rock's coming back, but me, me thinking, I, I was doing some thinking, all right? So I was just playing WWE 2K upstairs, like, before I started recording this. So I had an idea, because I was playing universe mode. At WrestleMania, obviously, it's probably going to be Roman versus The Rock, or Roman versus Cody, whatever one you want to do, right? We'll say Roman versus The Rock. They have a... Dog fight the whole match. Roman wins at the end. The Rock goes to raise his hand. And then he hits him with a um, rock bottom center of the ring. Here comes Damian Priest. Damian Priest cashes in. 
Damian Priest becomes Universal Champion. That will send a lot of people home happy and unhappy because happy because if you're a Roman hater, you're gonna be happy if you finally lost. Unhappy the judgment they have the Universal Championship. So what do y'all think? What do y'all think is gonna happen? He's ha he has to lose at some point. When is he gonna lose? How much longer do I think he's gonna have this title? And where? Like, yeah, like I said, who's gonna lose to? Who's gonna lose to? And when he's gonna lose? Number 11 and number 10, Rey Mysterio and Charlotte Flair. We actually have a tie. Not only were both these title reigns the same length, but they happened at the same pay-per-view. In 2010, Rey Mysterio fought Jack Swagger for the World Heavyweight Championship. Rey hadn't won a world title since WrestleMania 22 in 2006, so he had a lot riding on this match. Tonight proved to be Mysterio's night as he pinned Jack and won the gold. Swagger did engage in a post-match attack, but was scared off by the Money in the Bank winner, Kane. As Rey Mysterio quickly figured out though, Kane wasn't there to save him. After Swagger was taken care of, the Big Red Machine cashed in, put Rey Mysterio to sleep, and took his title. Something similar would happen nine years later. After losing her SmackDown Women's Championship in a winner-take-all match at WrestleMania 35, Charlotte Flair got a rematch against Becky Lynch at Money in the Bank. With a little help from Lacey Evans, Flair put the man down and became the new SmackDown Women's Champion. Becky then got a post-match beating at the hands of Lacey and Charlotte, which is broken up by Miss Money in the Bank, Bailey. Realizing the opportunity she had, Bailey cashed in and Charlotte kissed her title reign goodbye. However, Flair could take umbrage in the fact that her title reign lasted just as long as Rey Mysterio's at 4 minutes and 54 seconds. Number 9, Jillian Hall. Here's one oh accomplishment Jillian Hall has. Oh my gosh, Jillian Hall. Oh my lord. Jillian Hall is terrible. She should be like number one. Bro, when she used to sing, oh my gosh. I wonder if they're gonna have a clip in this. Over Charlotte Flair. In 2009, Jillian Hall got a huge opportunity when she fought the Divas Champion, Mickey James. In a major upset, Jillian Hall won the title after putting her feet on the ropes. However, Raw's guest host that evening, Nancy O'Dell, immediately set up Jillian Hall's first title defense. Molina was made the challenger, and in 27 seconds, she beat Jillian Hall and took the title. This put Jillian's seconds. one- 27 seconds? and only Divas Championship reign at four minutes and 14 oh, seconds. Okay. Number eight, John Cena. Before Sheamus won the WWE Championship in 2015, he had already done that five years earlier. As champion, Sheamus had to defend the title inside the Elimination Chamber. For his first time in the chamber, the Celtic Warrior did all right, but was the second to last person eliminated. In the final moments, it came down to old rivals, John Cena and Triple H. This time, Cena got the better of the game and won his eighth World Championship. After the victory, Vince McMahon came out, but he wasn't there to celebrate. Mick McMahon informed John Cena that he had to defend the WWE Championship immediately against Batista. The animal manhandled the champion and won, barely breaking a sweat. This meant that John Cena only held the WWE Championship for 3 minutes and 36 seconds. Number 7, Jeff Hardy. After finally taking care of oh, business man. with his brother, Jeff Hardy could focus on beating the Edge and becoming World Heavyweight Champion. The longtime rivals fought for the title, fittingly, in a ladder match. While Edge was a tough opponent, Jeff Hardy is the king of ladder matches, so he won. Jeff's celebration, though, was cut short when CM Punk's entrance music started playing. The Money in the Bank winner. Ah, I never forgive CM Punk for this moment. Jeff Hardy, if you've been watching me for a while, you know Jeff Hardy is my favorite wrestler of all time. And you also know I get on this man a lot for the things he's done in the past, DUIs and all that kind of stuff. I've gotten on him, so don't think, like, I just ignore all that, because I don't. But Jeff Hardy is still my favorite wrestler of all time. And if I could be a wrestler, I'd probably have a similar style to Jeff Hardy. But listen, I would never forgive CM Punk for this little rivalry that him and Jeff had, and then he ended up quitting. I'll never forgive him. I'll never forgive him for that, bro. And I used to like CM Punk when he was, you know, a good guy. But when he was a bad guy, I didn't like him. But now he's back. Is he going to beat Seth? Because we already know that's a WrestleMania, probably night one main event. Because CM Punk always complained about not having a main event match at WrestleMania. And his main event match at WrestleMania is probably going to be against Seth night one. So, 
Winner cashed in, and while Jeff Hardy tried his best to pull off an upset, there was nothing he could do. Hardy's quick defeat meant that his World Heavyweight Championship reign lasted three minutes and ten seconds. Number six, Bianca Belair. At Summer's on here, the women's champion Asuka found herself in a triple threat match against Charlotte Flair and the EST of WWE. Despite being the least decorated of everyone in the match, Bianca Belair pulled through and won the title. The celebration, though, was cut short by the interruption of Io oh Sky, who had her money in the big contract. With this was this was like last year. An eight second match followed where Sky beat Belair and became the new women's champion, meaning poor Bianca only held the title for two minutes and 36 seconds. Number five, Ezekiel Jackson. In the final days of ECW, the champion, Christian, had been feuding with Ezekiel Jackson. On the last ECW broadcast, Jackson and Christian faced off in an Extreme Rules match for the title. Thanks to a bit of help from Zack Ryder and William Regal, Jackson was able to finally knock off Christian and win the championship. Unfortunately, as soon as ECW went off the year, Ezekiel's title reign came to an end. In total, Jackson was world champion for 2 minutes and 25 seconds. Number 4, Yokozuna. So he didn't even lose. That's messed up, bro. He didn't even lose. At WrestleMania 9, Bret Hart was put to the test as he had to defend his WWE Championship against Yokozuna. Even though he lacked size, Bret Hart actually did pretty well, and it looked like he could have won. However, Mr. Fuji, Yokozuna's manager, changed that by throwing salt into Bret's eyes. Yokozuna was able to quickly beat Hart and became the new WWE Champion. After the match, Hulk Hogan came to his Canadian friend's aid, but was then challenged by Yokozuna. Hogan accepted, and thanks to a botched salt throw, the Hulks was able to beat Yoko and take the WWE Championship. Sadly for Yokozuna, his world title reign clocked in at a measly 2 minutes and 9 seconds. Number 3. Wow. Wow. Seth Rollins. The Architect made his WWE return at the 2016 Extreme Rules pay-per-view and immediately targeted the WWE Champion Roman Reigns. A match between the two was scheduled soon after and the former friends faced off at Money in the Bank. A back and forth match followed, but in the end, Seth won and reclaimed the WWE title. Dean Ambrose then came out, but he wasn't there to give Seth a pat on the back. The Lunatic Fringe used his Money in the Bank contract he won earlier to beat Seth and win his first WWE Championship. That's at least crazy. for Seth, he won the title of third shortest WWE Championship reign at 1 minute and 59 seconds. Bro, I don't remember that. All three SHIELD members were involved in the ending of that? That's... Good job, Vince. Seconds. Number two, The Big Show. In late 2011, Big Show, Daniel Bryan, and Mark Henry were all involved in a feud over the World Heavyweight Championship. On the last pay-per-view of that year, TLC, Big Show and Henry fought in a chairs match for Mark's World Heavyweight Championship. The world's largest athlete finally got the better of the world's strongest man and was able to become world champion. Henry, though, was a sore loser, and after the match, he hit Big Show with a DDT onto a chair. Daniel Bryan so saw that- That was so weak and immediately cashed in his Money in the Bank contract. He didn't even hit a single move, choosing just to cover Big Show. The Giants sadly ended the night with a world title reign that lasted 1 minute and 54 seconds. But there's someone else who had an even shorter title reign. And number one, Andre the Giant. About a year after their legendary match at WrestleMania 3, Andre the Giant and Hulk Hogan went at it again. This time though, the match ended in controversy. Andre went to pin Hulk, but despite Hogan kicking out, the referee- Yo, ref! Are you not looking? Oh, are you not looking? His shoulders off the mat. What are you looking at? You're supposed to be looking at his shoulders. Match ended in controversy. Andre went to pin Hulk, but he definitely kicked out. Look how early he kicked out. Hogan kicking out. The referee. Why are you counting with your head down? What's the point of you? What are you down counting? What are you counting? His shoulder is off the mat, bro. Controversy. Andre went to pin Hulk, but despite Hogan kicking out, the referee still counted the pinfall. Even though Andre clearly hadn't won, the Giant was still awarded the WWE Championship. To make the moment even stranger, Andre decided to sell the championship to the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, immediately after. Hey, championships don't pay bills, but cash does. Because of this, Andre the Giant gave himself the shortest WWE Championship reign at 1 minute and 46 seconds. Speaking of Andre, what was his real height? To find out, I'm done. I'm done, bro. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Hey, man, if y'all got any other videos y'all mean to react to in particular, let me know down below in the comments, man. I appreciate all y'all for watching. Like I said, we're almost at 5K, so let's go ahead and get that 5K. Keep going crazy. Hey, like this video, subscribe if you're new. It's your boy D-Rip, man. I'm out.